What's going on Scottsdale students? Because of this social distancing, we're doing all of our messages on the digital platform. Today we have a special treat. My very good friend, best friend, Garrett Burns is gonna bring us a word. We're at his apartment right now. He's a apartment letter T. Yeah, I know it's early in the morning, but hey, let's go in anyways, come on. Garrett. Dude, dude, we got a film. Come on in, man. How do you try to make yourself feel better? Maybe in times of uncertainty or in response to fear or, or even panic? In my life, I have found I always work best with a plan. Even when I was little, my mom would give me chores to do, like put these clothes away and I would go to my room as fast as I can, I would sit down at my little desk, and I would write out a plan. And that plan would almost always involve roping my little sister into doing half the job for me. But plans didn't change for me as I grew older. Whenever I started playing sports in high school, we would watch film. And in that film, we would see what their plan was, what they liked to do, how they liked to do it. And when we did this, we would develop a game plan for how best to win against them. And students, I think we need the same thing right now. Our government officials are giving us game plans for how best to protect us. We can watch that. We can see these things that they're sending out to us. Um, and I think we should listen to them and we should follow the guidelines that they're sending out. But what about our souls? What about our mental well-being? What about our spiritual health? We need a game plan for that as well. And how we're going to do that is we are going to look at God's Word and see what He has to say. In fact, He's already given us a game plan, and we can find this in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And when we look at these verses, we see God's game plan. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Praise over panic. That's our, our first point. That's the first way that we uh, implement this game plan that God has for us in Philippians. Just looking at those first two verses where it says rejoice. We have a God who actually desires for his people to be happy, to overflow with, with joy. And that's what rejoice means. Rejoice simply means to express or to show the emotion of joy that you have. And we don't just show this emotion, but we actually show it uh, in the Lord. God says that we rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. We have so many reasons to, to be filled with an expressive joy in the Lord. He's given us salvation. He has, he has uh, brought us in, in safety. The Christ has, has died. He has given his life uh, for us to have eternal life and eternal security. Um, so we have no reason to panic. Instead, we actually have reason to rejoice. And when I think about, when I think about rejoicing, I think about my wedding day. Um, believe me, my wedding day didn't go perfectly. I had, I had people that I, I wanted to have come that weren't able to be there. Plans got rearranged. We actually had to leave early. Um, but it was still a time of rejoicing, even in the midst of, of reasons where I could have gotten down or, or gotten anxious or, or resorted to panic. Instead, I was still able to rejoice because I had a union with the one who brought me so much joy. And we have union. Students, you have a union through faith with the one who has created you, with, with the one who loves you and has always loved you. You have union with him. And so no matter what's going on around us in this season, we have reason to rejoice. We have reason to praise him. And the verse actually says that we don't just praise him uh, by ourselves or praise him alone, although we do do that. We actually praise Him in a way that others can see. And that's really difficult during this season as we talk about social distancing and, and ways where we're not supposed to be in close contact with people. But we can still let other people see our praise, our praise that we have in the Lord. We can still let other people see that uh, in different ways. I think of uh, my neighbor. He lives right below me. And my wife and I, we wrote him a letter. Just as simple as that. He's an older gentleman and uh, he's not able to do a lot of the things that, that we are because 
Um, he is uh, extra vulnerable right now. Uh, but we wrote him a letter. We shared with him the love of Christ that we have. We shared with him the peace um, that praising God brings us. And we just offered to help him in any way we can. And now we have conversations with him. He smiles at us. We wave. Um, he, he has had... Uh, We've had conversations with him about religion even, um, and he has told us to call him Grandpa Ray. And that's just an easy way, just writing a letter is an easy way where we can praise God in a way that beats the panic. People want to be part of a movement, and people want to be part of, of something that is going on, and panic is what's going on right now, but we can reverse that. Students, you can reverse that right now and be a, a catalyst for peace to spread through our city and, and, and through our church and through our town and through our world even, that can start with you. Peace beats panic. And you have, we have a peace that beats the panic. And that's the part, that's the first part of our game plan. Peace beating panic. But we have a second part of our game plan. And that's prayer beats panic. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer beats panic. That's point two. Look, anxiety and, and panic, they're not going to stop trying. But we do have a guardian for our hearts and our minds. And that's what, what prayer does for us. The verse actually says that we go to God with prayer, with supplication, and with thanksgiving. These are things that we can do, and when we do that, He actually guards our hearts and our minds. Peace actually guards our hearts and our minds. What a second point for our game plan, that we have somebody who can guard us, who can guard our heart, who can guard our minds from anxiety, guard us from panic that tries to set in. And the text says we do that in two ways. Number one, prayer, but two ways of prayer. And the first one is through asking. That's what supplication means. We, you guys have been looking at Job. We've been walking through the letter to Job, and we saw how, how, how Job went to God in prayer. And he asked him. He asked him questions. He asked him his needs. He told him how he felt about things. He, he went to the God who he knew had the answers. He went to the God who he knew had the power to actually make a difference, to change something, to, to affect his, his circumstances, he went to God. And you can ask God for anything. You can ask Him for the things that are on your heart. You can ask Him for the things that are, that are on your mind and, and weighing you down. You can, you can go to God uh, with, with all sorts of things. In other places in Scripture, uh, the, the text actually says that, that God bends His ear toward His people. He wants to hear what you have to say. Our Father is a good Father, and yes, He's a King. Yes, He sits on the throne, but He is not so far away that He doesn't want to listen to you and hear your heart and hear your mind. He wants these things, and so He wants you to talk to Him. Go to God in prayer. Ask Him for what you want to ask Him for. But the text also says we ask Him with thanksgiving. Now that's something that I believe Job forgot to do. He knew who was in control. He knew God was sovereign. That means, that means God was, was in control over everything. He knew this about God. And so he went to him and God wasn't mad for Job going to him, but he was upset that Job didn't also thank him. That's something that you guys have to remember to do. And we have, just like we have reason to praise him, we have reason to thank him. All the praiseworthy things that he, that he is in his character and his nature, we, he deserves thanks for that. He deserves to be praised. And so we go to him and we ask him for what we need, but we also go to him with thankfulness, with, with gratefulness. And as the text says in, in verse 7, he will guard our hearts and our minds. He will guard it. It's like a, a mighty warrior, like a huge army against fear, against anxiety, against depression, against panic that seems to be uh, filling people left and right. We have a guardian in our hearts. We have a guardian for our minds. And if we would just go to God with prayer, with the prayer that beats panic, that guard will be there and he'll be there for you. So that's our second point. Prayer beats panic. But then we have a final point, and that's that practice beats panic. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, 
If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The third point is practice beats panic. That's the third point, the final point in our game plan that God has given us in Philippians chapter 4. The last two verses of our section, verses 8 and 9, they say that we are to have godly thinking and godly actions. That first one, godly thinking. I don't know why it is this way. It's this way with me. It might be this way with you, but whenever something happens, a situation comes in, a circumstance enters, uh, enters my life, the first place my mind goes is to the negative. It's to the bad things. It's the things that could go wrong or might go wrong. And I, I don't know why that is, but I do know that's not from God. I do know that that is that's Satan's plan, but God has given us a better way. And verse 8 tells us that we are to think of the heavenly things. Think of the, the things that are excellent. If there's anything worthy of praise, that's what we fill our minds with. That's what we're supposed to think about. And so even Colossians says to position our hearts to the things above, uh, position our minds to the things above, because that's where Christ is. We think of those things. We think of the truths that we know and are firm. We think of the eternal life that has been given to us because of our faith. We think of the, the hope that we have that's an anchor to our soul. We think of the spirit that we walk in and that empowers us every day. We think of these truths. That's how we set our minds right. That's what we do so that we can uh, practice godly thinking and, and, and practice what beats panic. That's in our mind. But then the second part is, is practice uh, godly actions. And the way that we do that, Paul says in verse 9, is he actually tells them to look at his life. He says, look at my life, what you've seen, what I've told you, uh, receive what I, what I do, and do it yourself. A little monkey see, monkey do action for the life of Paul. And for us, we know we have the life of Jesus. We have them in the gospel accounts. We're supposed to look to those. But God knows us so well. He created us, and so he actually gave us godly leaders. He put godly leaders in person in our lives so that we can practice godly actions. You guys have Josh. You guys have Tucker. You guys have Stephanie. You have all the other pastors of the church that you can look to. And I want to encourage you students, model their lives. See what they're doing in these times. See what they're doing to avoid panic, to avoid anxiety and stress. Do what they're doing. That's what Paul wants us to do. That's what God wants us to do. That's the third part of our game plan, the final part of our game plan that will give us victory uh, over panic. And that's practice beats panic. And it says in the final part of verse 9 that if we do these things, the God of peace will be with us. Students, if you do these things, the God of peace will be with you. Now, the verse doesn't say the word promise, but it is a promise nonetheless because we know that God cannot lie. He cannot lie. His, his character doesn't change. He's eternal that way. And because he has said, if we practice holy thinking, if we practice holy living, holy actions, then the God of peace will be by our side. We have praise, we have prayer, and we have practice, and that brings us peace. The God of all peace brings it to us. We have a guardian for our heart and our mind. We have the God of peace with us forever, eternally. We have that promise if we follow the game plan that the Lord has given us through this fourth chapter of Philippians. We even see that Job followed this game plan. When these things happened to him right at the start, he fell down and he worshiped. He still praised God. We see that he went to God in prayer. Yes, as Josh said last week, he went to friends, friends talked to him, but ultimately he went to the Lord for answers and to ask God for what he wanted. And then we see, we know that he was a man that practiced godly thinking and godly living. That's the reason that Satan wanted to tempt him in the first place. It was because Job was a righteous man. He was a faithful man, the Lord says, by the end of Job. And so we know that he followed this game plan as we think about focusing on the right things, focusing on the things the Lord wants us to focus, despite the emotions that are going on all around us. We follow God's game plan, peace over panic. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've enjoyed this message as you've tuned in. Um, remember that we love you and that you always matter. 
All right. You gonna go in there, dude? Yeah, man, dropping in like a boss. This is how, this is how real skaters drop in. It's so steep, man. Yeah. I'm just gonna slide, just gonna roll down it, just to show you how, how it's really done. Just a little. Just like that. Yes. It's your turn. <laughs> I'm beat, man. <laughs> Honestly, respect to people who do that. I was in fear for my life. <laughs> and you weren't even on a board. I know. I, I lowered myself down. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to get out, though. <laughs> I thought some my wife was going to have to bring me my meals. <laughs> But yeah. now they're gonna rename this Burns Burns Bowl. That's what this is. This is Burns Bowl now. 